Hello guys, welcome back to Recap God. Today I would be giving you a recap of an American adventure drama produced in 2003, titled Finding Nemo. Marlin, a clownfish, and his wife, Coral went to see the view of the ocean. They were searching for a new neighborhood because of their kids. Marlin said that they were going to name half of the eggs, Marlin Jr. and the other half Coral Jr. Coral said she likes the name Nemo and agreed to name one of the eggs Nemo. They were both happy that in a couple of days they were going to be parents. Suddenly a barracuda attacked them and Marlin tried to save his family. Unfortunately, the barracuda killed Coral and almost ate all the 400 eggs. Marlin only found one of the eggs, although it was damaged, Marlin promised to never let anything happen to him. He named the baby Nemo. Five fish years later. It was Nemo's first day at school. Due to the attack, Nemo has a short right fin, which made Marlin overprotective of him. Marlin told Nemo that it was fine if he doesn't want to go to school that year. He said that he could wait five to six more years. Marlin had already warned Nemo that the ocean was not safe. Marlin told him to always check if the coast is clear before swimming out. Other students made fun of Nemo because of his defective fin. Nemo introduced himself to his class teacher, Mr. Ray, and told his dad to leave. When Marlin heard that the kids were going to drop off, he ran after them. Me Ray told the students to explore but they must stay close. Nemo made three friends on his first day at school. His friends were playing in the open water but Nemo refused too. He said that his dad had told him that it was dangerous. Not long, his dad arrived and scolded him for wanting to swim in the open water. His friends explained to Marlin that Nemo didn't swim in the water. Marlin shut them up and told them that he wasn't speaking with them. Marlin disgraced Nemo and told him that he doesn't have the fin to swim around. Nemo was embarrassed and mad and told his dad he hates him. Mr. Ray arrived and Marlin explained to him why he can't allow Nemo to swim. While they were talking, Nemo went swimming and he got close to a boat. Nemo! Marlin called him to come back and told him not to touch the boat. Get Nemo touched here. the boat to prove he was courageous but while Nemo! he was swimming back to his dad a scuba diver fish napped Nemo into a net. Marlin saw his son captured and he immediately chased the boat but he couldn't catch up the motors were too fast. Marlin bumped into Dory on his way and she offered to help him. Dory has an acute short time memory loss and thought Marlin was following her. Marlin reminded her again about the help she was rendering. Dory apologized and told him about her illness. The two met with a big shark, Bruce, on their way. Bruce demanded that they follow him to a party. At the party, Bruce and other sharks pledged not to eat fish. They said that fish were their friends and not food. Bruce gave a testimony that it had been three weeks since he had eaten fish. Dory also gave a testimony that she had never eaten a fish. Marlin was forced to also share his testimony, although, he told them that he had none, they told him to say his name. He told them his name and also mentioned that he was a clownfish. He was asked to them a joke but while it was saying a dry joke, he saw one of the diver's masks. He told them how the divers captured his son. Marlin saw something written on the mask but he couldn't read it. Dory took the mask to the sharks to ask them if they could read it. While Marlin was stopping her from asking the sharks, he hits Dory with it accidentally. This made her bleed. The blood scent sent Bruce into a feeding madness, but the remaining sharks intervened and reminded him that fish are their friends. Bruce could not control the frenzy, he started running after them. They accidentally made a blast which knocked Marlin and Dory out. Nemo was placed in an aquarium in the office of a dentist, Philip Sherman. Philip claimed that he saw Nemo alone in the water swimming. Nemo met with Deb, a damselfish, Peach, a starfish, Jacques, a cleaner shrimp, Bloat, a blowfish. They all told him the pet store they were from but Nemo said he was from the ocean. Philip told Nemo that he would be given to his niece, Darla. Darla was said to have killed the fish given to her the previous year. This made Nemo afraid of going with her. Nemo got stuck in a tube and called for help. Gil, a Moorish idol told them not to help him. He asked Nemo to get himself out of the tube but Nemo told him that he has a bad fin. Gil showed him his bad fin and told him that it had never stopped him from doing anything. The group encouraged him that he could do it and Nemo eventually released himself from the tube. Peach told Nemo that Gil was also from the ocean. Dory and Marlin woke up unharmed. They were kept safe inside the goggles. The mask fell from Dory into a deep hole. They went after it but met with an anglerfish that chased them. They saw the mask and they were running away from the anglerfish. Dory tried to read the writings on the mask while Marlin distracted the anglerfish. Dory was happy that she could remember what the writing says after they had escaped from the anglerfish. The fishes did a welcoming ceremony for Nemo later that night into their club. But he had to swim through the wind of fire. Surprisingly, Nemo swam through and Gil told him that he would be known as shark bait. Gil mentioned that they couldn't allow him to go with Darla and that they have to help him escape. Gil added that they were all going to escape. The fishes were scared that Jill's plan would end up being like the rest he had made and they were not able to escape. Gil assured them that they had Nemo and his new plan would work. 
He told Nemo that he is the only one that could get into a filter. He mentioned that he would take a pebble from the filter and jams the gears. If he can do that, the aquarium would be filled with green algae. Philip would have no choice but to clean the aquarium and bring them out. They would then roll themselves down the window when he puts them into individual baggage. Nemo, now Sharkbait agreed to the plan. Marlin and Dory tried to get their way to Philip's place but it was all in vain. Marlin then told Dory that he would like to continue the journey alone. He said Dory was one of the fish that causes delay and he doesn't want any more delay. What Marlin said made Dory cry. Dory later helped him to get directions from a group of moonfish. The moonfish advised that they should swim through the trench and not over it. When they got to the trench, Marlin insisted that they swim over and not through. When swimming over, they staggered into the forest of jellyfish. They played a game by hopping on the back of the jellyfish without touching their tentacles. Marlin made it out but Dory didn't. Marlin had to go back into the forest to find Dory. Dory had been stung by the jellyfish and Marlin also when it was trying to save Dory. Marlin saved Dory but the sting made them unconscious. Gil asked Nemo if he misses his father. He told Nemo that he was lucky to have yeah, someone out there looking for him. There Nemo good. told him that he was sure his father isn't looking for him because of his fear of the ocean. Peach told Sharkbait that he has 4.2 minutes to jam the gears. Nemo took a pebble to stop water from flowing through the tube and he returned to the tank through the tube. The pebble was removed. Unfortunately, the water was restored into the tube. Marlin was rescued by Crush. So Mr. Turtle... Whoa, dude, Mr. Turtle is my father. Name's Crush. A turtle. Marlin told him that he needed to get to the East Australian Current. Marlin told the little turtles how Mr. Philip took his son from him. He blamed himself for being tough on Nemo and that he might not have gone to the boat if he wasn't mad at him. Everyone in the ocean talked about how Marlin was out there searching for Nemo. Nemo apologized to Gil for not stopping the water and Gil also apologized to him for not getting him back to his father. The story of Marlin looking for his son got to Nigel, a pelican. Nigel lives close to Philip's office went to tell Nemo about it. He told them how Marlin had battled with the sharks and jellyfish before it could get to the Eastern Australian Current. Nemo refused to believe that he could take down sharks. Nigel told him that he is on his way to Sydney with a bunch of sea right turtles. Now. When Does Nemo heard about it, he developed courage and stopped water from entering through the filter. Crush told Dory and Marlin that their exit is through the swirling vortex of terror. Squirt, Crush's son, gave them a rundown of proper exiting techniques. Good afternoon, we're gonna have a great job today! Hey, go, go, go. <laughs> Crush told them to turn their fishy tails around and swim straight to Sydney. The turtles bid them by. Marlin asked Crush for his age and he said 150 years and still young. They needed help with the directions and saw a whale. They tried communicating with the whale but the whale didn't understand their language. Dory. Dory, this is gonna be hungry. Don't worry, whales don't eat clownfish, they eat krill. Swim away! The whale helped them by expelling them to Sydney. The tank was full of green algae. Philip noticed the tank and made a schedule to clean it before Darla gets there. When they woke up the next morning, the tank was already clean. They were surprised about how it happened. Philip had instilled an aquascum when they were sleeping. The aquascum is an all-purpose self-cleaning machine, maintenance-free, and saltwater purifier. The aquascum is programmed to scan the environment every five minutes. Philip captured Nemo and placed him in a bag. Darla has arrived to take Nemo away but he pretended to be dead. Nigel helped Marlin and Dory to get into Philip's office. Nigel causes chaos and this makes Philip throw him, Dory, and Marlin through the window. Marlin thought he had lost his son and left Dory with Nigel. Dory begged him to stay with her but he didn't listen and he departed. The departure made Dory lose her memory again. Gil helped Nemo to escape from the bag. He landed into Philip's dentist tools. Philip, thinking that Nemo was dead, threw Nemo into the toilet sink. Nemo finds his way out and met Dory. Dory couldn't remember him due to the memory loss but regained her memory when she read the word Sydney on a drainpipe. Dory helped Nemo search for his father. When they united, a fishing net captured Dory along with other fish. Nemo entered into the net to help Dory. Although his dad didn't agree to it at first, he convinced him that he had to do it to save Dory. Nemo instructed Dory and other fish to swim down. The fish kept swimming down until they got to the bottom of the ocean and they all escaped. Nemo told Marlin that he doesn't hate him and Marlin told him that he met a sea turtle and that Oldham crushes age. When they returned home, Marlin is more confident in Nemo and takes him to school. Dory remained friends with the sharks and the sharks invited them for another party. Nemo hugs his dad and told him that he loves him. The aquascum had been destroyed and Philip had to clean the tank. He placed the fish inside individual bags and they escaped through Sydney Harbour. While still in the bag, they thought of what would happen next. Thank you for staying with me till the end I hope you enjoyed the recap. Kindly subscribe on our channel so you would get notified when we post a movie recap.
Thank you and see you next time.